اللهم أكثر مالي وولدي وبارك لي فيما أعطيتني الله ربي لا أشرك به شيئا اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك بسم الله والحمد لله وثناء لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله الله تبارك وتعالى He created us so that we worship Him And one of the greatest acts of worship that Allah تبارك وتعالى loves And that Allah تبارك وتعالى He constantly tells us to do It is calling upon Him and asking Him and supplicating to Him جل في علا بعد الله تبارك وتعالى تلز ان القران وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم ان الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين and your lord said call upon me i shall respond to you allah promises to respond to you when you call upon him and then he said jalla fi ula إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي Verily those who are arrogant regarding my worship Allah called dua worship because all of worship entails dua supplicating to Allah Azza wa Jal Allah says that they shall be punished in the hellfire and humiliated And Allah Azza wa Jal tells us وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي If my slaves ask you, O Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام, about me, Allah says, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Verily, I am close. Allah Azza wa Jal is close to you. Allah hears everything that you say. Allah Azza wa Jal is close to you with his knowledge, جل في علا. Ujibu, I respond to the call of the caller. When he calls upon me, the conditions that you raise your hands to Allah, you ask Allah, and you call upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi tells us that Allah Jalla fi ula, when you don't ask him, Allah becomes angry with you. Meaning that when you do ask Allah, the more you ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the more Allah loves you. And the more happier Allah Azza wa Jal will be with you. Jalla fi ula. Just like the poet would say, لا تسألن بني آدم حاجة وسل الذي أبوابه لا تحجب الله يغضب إن تركت سؤاله وبني آدم حين يسأل يغضب He said, do not ask the human being for anything. But ask Allah. The one whose gates are never shut. Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah becomes angry when you don't ask him. And the human being, the more you ask him, وَبُنَيُّ آدَمَ حِينَ يَسْأَلُ يَغْضَبُ The human being, the more you ask him, the more annoyed and agitated and angry he becomes with you. But Allah becomes happy with you the more you ask him. جَلَّ فِي عُلَى But this dua that we're talking about, It is what can change your decree, your qadr. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us, لا يرد القضاء إلا الدعاء Nothing changes qadr, your decree, except dua. But that dua that you're making to Allah Azza wa Jal, what makes it effective? What makes it, يعني, a dua that you get a response from Allah Azza wa Jal when you Call upon Allah with this dua. It's all about how you ask Allah. And the way you phrase your dua. And the way you call upon Allah Jalla fi ula. Because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, when you call upon Him in a certain manner, it's almost impossible for Allah Azza wa to not reject your dua. And the best duas are the duas that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala informed us about in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet. 
It's the best way that you can format your dua when you're calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal. And the most beautiful dua are the duas of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Because he alayhi salatu salam is the one who nearly every situation that he called upon Allah Azza wa Jal and everything he asked Allah Azza wa Jal for, Allah wa ta'ala granted him it. So by you learning the duas of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam and calling upon Allah wa ta'ala in the way of the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, that will make your dua the best dua. And you get a response. But ayyuh al-kiram, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he taught us, in order for this dua, the way that we're calling upon Allah azza wa jal, in order for us to get a response, there are a number of things that we must apply. Number one, that you are sincere. That you sincerely raise your hands to Allah azza wa jal. That you are seeking the pleasure of Allah and the reward of Allah and the face of Allah and nothing else. You're calling upon Allah sincerely. Because look at this, Allah gives us the worst scenario. Allah Azza wa tells us about the disbelievers. When they're on their ships and they're sailing in the, in the sea, and a huge storm comes, and then they fear for their lives, they're afraid. These are polytheists who disbelieve in Allah, who are worshipping other than Allah, who are associate partners with Allah. Allah says, what happens? What do they do? فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ Allah says when they're sailing on their ships in the sea and the storm comes, they're afraid for their lives. What do they do? They call upon Allah sincerely. They raise their hands to Allah sincerely. They ask Allah, Ya Allah! Save us, no one else. They don't call upon their idols, no one else. Sincerely, Allah. And Allah says, because of their sincerity, Allah saves them. And He allows them to reach the shore safely. And then they go back to their shirk and their, their disbelief in Allah. So Allah is telling us, because of the sincerity of the disbelievers, Allah responds to them, What about you who you are a believer in Allah, who worships Allah, who glorifies Allah? No doubt when you call upon Allah Azza wa sincerely, Allah Azza wa will grant you response. Let's give you another scenario. Fir'aun, the worst tyrant, who said, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. He said, I'm your Lord the Most High. When Fir'aun was drowning in the sea, the Prophet والسلام, told us that Jibreel والسلام, informed him that he said, I was throwing the dust and sand in the mouth of Fir'aun. Why? Why did he do that? Because he says, مَخَافَةَ أَن تُدْرِكُهُ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ مَخَافَةَ أَن تُدْرِكَهُ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ I was afraid, Jibreel says, that the mercy of Allah could have reached him because Fir'aun could have uttered a statement in that situation sincerely. And because of how vast and how great the mercy of Allah is, and Jibreel knows that, that Allah may grant him his mercy. But of course, it was too late. It was at the stage where Fir'aun's soul had reached his throat. He was dying, khalas. So even that moment, even if he said anything, it would have been too late because the door of repentance is closed when the soul reaches the throat. But Jibreel alayhi salam, because he knows how great the mercy of Allah azza wa is, he was trying to prevent that from happening. Because dua can make the impossible possible. What seems impossible, possible. Ibrahim alayhi salam. All of his people, they turn against him. His family turn on him. Rather, they all come together to kill him, to burn him alive. They light this huge fire and Ibrahim alayhi salam is standing in front of it. He's about to be thrown into this fire. He's about to be killed. What happens? Ibrahim alayhi salam, as he's standing there, he's approached by the best of angels, Jibreel alayhi salam. Now imagine this, that you're standing in front of fire and you're about to be killed. Your life's in danger. If someone came and offered you help to rescue you, of course you'd take that help. Any help you can get, you'd immediately take it. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, look at this. Jibreel alayhi salatu salam comes to him and he says to him, Ya Ibrahim, do you have a request? Is there anything I can help you with? And he says, as for you, I request nothing. He's been teaching all these people 
monotheism, call upon Allah alone, worship Allah alone, be sincere to Allah Azza wa Jal. In this situation, this difficult time, is he going to contradict himself? Of course not. He says to them, he says to Jibreel alayhi salam, as for you, I request nothing. I only request from Allah Jalla fi awla, and he says, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me and he's the best disposer of my affairs and he's the best guardian. The moment Ibrahim salam uttered that statement, Allah made what seemed impossible, possible. Allah says, Qulna ya naru kuni barda. Qulna ya naru kuni barda wa salaman ala Ibrahim. وَأَرَادُوا بِهِ كَيْدًا فَجَعَلْنَاهُمُ الْأَخْسَرِينَ Allah says, we said, O oh fire, be cool and safe for Ibrahim a.s. The fire was cooled down for him and safe. He came out not harmed at all because of that connection to Allah and calling upon Allah alone. Dua did that. Dua. It is, or it is the soldiers and the troops of Allah Azza wa Jal that will never be defeated. When you are a believer who calls upon Allah and attaches himself to Allah and you raise your hands to Allah, Jalla fi ula, Allah Ta'ala will always grant you response. And Allah Ta'ala will always assist you. And Allah Ta'ala will aid you. And Allah Ta'ala promises to be with you, Jalla fi ula. It's just a matter of you raising your hands. Raised hands to Allah, change everything. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to make us from those who He's pleased with. And we ask Allah wa ta'ala to make us from those who constantly call upon Him because that is the delight and pleasure of this world. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alam.